Well, welcome back, everybody, to Bear's Rod Shop. Uh, yesterday, uh, we did a short video. I'm going to go back and title that part one. This is on a 59 Ford Custom 300. And uh, this morning, I've got the vinyl laid out upside down, of course. Uh, we always mark do our markings on the back side with pencil, never with a fountain pen or especially a Sharpie that's uh, permanent ink, it will come through uh, for you guys that are starting out. Yes, you can see the marks real well. Use a grease pencil, a regular pencil marks real well. And here is the new green vinyl. First of all, even though it comes out uh, brand new from a supplier, check your material. Get it out. There can be blemishes from... Uh, the factory there can be blemishes from setting on shelves too long uh, this has a few little pruckers in it they will come out with the heat it was rolled against the the dielectric material I brought it up to the owner uh, well, he's he's cool with it but uh, anytime you get material don't leave them setting on a shelf especially a steel rack uh, they will permanently put marks in your vinyl. Cloth's real forgiving, of course. But we're going to get started this morning. Uh, yesterday I was showing you about patterning. And here you can see I'm already transferred every piece for that solo seat with the seam allowance in. We talked about this red mark so you catch your eye. This is being the one that's going to be for the left drivers. All the marks, I've added a few more yesterday in, uh, just for my own convenience. But put you plenty of good markings. Let's, uh, that being said, let's lay this thing out. There's the back piece. Here's the front dielectric. All lines up center, center. That you could, I just put a crow's foot so it catches my eye. I know where it's at. This piece right here, being the bottom uh, down below, it will start here. Again, crow's foot. Maybe I'll just zoom in here a little bit better for you guys. Let's see if we can't get you in closer. I'm going way too far. Don't have any help today videoing. Uh, Here's this piece that's marked out. You saw the orange. That catches my eye real well. I know exactly on the back it's marked in orange. When I reverse this, and I'm fixing to put this together to show you how to reverse them real quick. This one goes over here. We got A. This is A and A together. Uh, I do that so I know it's one solid when it's finished piece. Here's the right hand side here's if you can see that far let's let's zoom back out here how's that okay here's this piece over here and all those marks will correspond down and then here on the outside is uh seven eight and nine and ten so now you can kind of get a glimpse. There it is as the left driver's side. Now let's start flipping it. We're going to just turn this pattern right over. If I was to mark this on this side right now, this would be the correct solo. Even though this is the passenger side, if you can see this. Let me uh, come down here a little bit closer. Uh, this, just flip them over. And you flip over, everything lines back like it should. You flip over, and this is going on that side. Here's the, the orange, the orange piece. I'm going to have to pick the camera up here a little bit. So, make life simple, and you lay this one down. And this one, and then of course the other one comes over here on this side, lines up with the C, D, E, and F. I've already double checked to make sure everything comes out at these seams. 
That is very critical. That is, if you get here and you're half inch off, stop, take it loose, move it. Some people like to start it the same. I like to start at one end of the, the material and sew it all the way around. You'll fight yourself if you try to take that thing and start at the middle when they're this tight. Now this is a tight crown. So the machine, you're gonna get pretty bulky quick if you start up here, let's say at the top, then you're gonna to have to flip over. So, and here's this one for the passenger. And there's eight, nine, and 10. So DYI, we hope this really helps a lot. And uh, we're gonna put this as part two. And again, yesterday on the 59, 300 custom will we'll retitle it as part one. It may be done in 10, 11 parts. Once this is cut out, each one of these has the note. This back piece, here is smooth vinyl, it's marked on there. Eighth inch foam will be applied to this. It will not be listered to this piece. It will be sewn completely around. That way when you stretch over, uh, sometimes the glue, you push in and that thumbprint fingerprint, whatever's laid against it, is permanently pressed. Yes, we do a lot of street rods, but not when they have a slip over back. So they'll have a, a cover that goes over the top and normally it would be fastening the material over here on the side, then a new or steel or plastic or cardboard covered. Then that, that way you could then foam. But uh, this is the way we do it. But lay out your patterns, plenty, plenty of marks. And uh, I guess I could get this out. Let's go ahead and pull this camera up out of here and see if we cannot see a little better picture of this. You can see all the little red dots over there. They catch my eye. You know, I'm not the, uh, I don't have the best vision, but the red marks and that will be lining up uh, down through here. I know that this piece here will end up at the top and then this one will end up as it's going down the back and then this this is orange excuse me not red orange that just catches your eye that's where this has got to finish and uh, then you have the hog that goes on here but this tail actually goes down below with a hem in it and uh, that uh, makes off for where it's pulled over the uh, side of the seat where the hinge is at. So, hope this uh, DIY helps you guys that are wanting to start out and learn and probably have already bought you a sewing machine and kind of get intimidated with them. Some of them with the uh, commercial motors. Uh, they, they, mine is super fast, sitting in the background back there at Juki. I can make it creep with my foot, but it's been from years of you know, sitting behind that machine. Uh, thinking about hiring somebody to come in here, I'll probably have to put a servo motor so they can get used to the machine, turn it up and down. And uh, servos are the way to go. But uh, that has been an old school. I've had that since uh, 98 and served us well. Come back and see us. Please send me your comments. We'll try to make these videos fairly instructional but we won't just sit here all day and, and video two or three hours. Uh, when we come back tomorrow, all these pieces here will be cut out. I'll end up uh, this afternoon, the vinyl pieces that require the eighth inch uh, scrim foam behind them, get those over. Uh, I will show you how I sew them on. Sew them on with the longest stitch uh, that you can possibly get. Set your tension a little bit light. That way, if that foam needs to move before you sew down the other material to it, that you can take out any puckers, wrinkles, trim the salvage, but uh, then you set your stitch to a closer pattern so you have good, nice, uh, tight seams. Uh, come back and see us and visit us, and uh, if you got any comments, comments or questions, please give us a call. No, don't give us a call. Give us a comment. Thank you.